what's happening, Rude Nation? It's your boys, the Rude Boys, back again for the Rude Boys Power Hour Plus episode 90. 90. Uh, let's talk about marriage starts. Yes. Uh, I'm Sharm, and I'm going to ween. I'm Tom, and God, I cannot believe you just did that. I, I, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounded like everyone doing on 200 cc I, 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 uh, oh my god yeah so we got yeah we got mario kart talk about uh root yeah. nation we got some memories from the nation we've got uh just a lot lot to talk about um so let's kick it into uh 200 cc right now tommy who is that you have in your mouth i have some hot chocolate on this chilly chilly day oh, uh, some, you. some swiss miss Oh, okay. My, night, my Nightwing cup that no one can see because we're not a visual medium. That's true. I can see it though. It looks pretty cool. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking sexy. Um, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Who is in your mouth? There it is. Uh, I got a uh, Irish cream cold brew uh, from Starbucks right here. Um, it is not great. This this one uh, this is a this is a good drink in uh, generally speaking. Um, whomever made this uh, did not do a good job, and uh, but I'm still sucking it down like a pro, what's like the pro with? I am. So Tommy, what's it spiked with? Uh, there's nothing in here. I'm hungover, so uh, you know maybe <laughs> later. I'm, I'm I'm gearing up. So right now I'm I'm right now at about 50 cc. I gotta get there. You know what I'm saying? Run the dog, bitch. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, you're but for now, mirror. you gotta go mirror. Mirror mode. Yep. Yeah, fuck it. I don't know the course. Fuck it. Mirror mode. Uh, so for now, Tommy, let's uh, let's clink it and thud it up. I don't know where the microphone is on here. Uh oh. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I did something. I cool. You poured hot chocolate all over your fucking phone. Ah. All right. I'd be very twisted if I did that. All right, Tommy. Let's. Uh, I'm going to a little Blitzkrieg news, Tommy. Yeah, that's what we do, right? We do Blitzkrieg first. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, let's rev on into Blitzkrieg news. Here we go. Right. Drifting into Blitzkrieg. Drift, nice. Starting off in games, Microsoft raises their prices for live. Yes, yeah, so um, the uh, the little company known as uh, Microsoft uh, has this uh, online uh components of their games business called xbox live and um they raised the prices um so um and this this happened about a week ago um so it, they're just everything's going up a couple bucks uh one month for xbox live gold is uh 10.99 three months 29.99 six months uh 59.99 they're definitely kind of trying to push like the game pass and the uh, game pass ultimate and stuff like that uh which does include xbox live gold um kind of scummy to do this during a pandemic um and um it was not well received because uh, psych (laughs) nope they didn't do that yeah that is correct in about less than 24 hours it took them uh to just kind of like ah shit you know what no this wasn't really well received nobody liked this so (laughs) yeah sorry everybody my bad our bad um yeah i'm pretty pretty wild because like how quickly they turned around on it um just based off of the negative reception it was getting uh yeah. good for microsoft to do something like that i mean we all just got a price hike w- with netflix and um uh-huh. you know they all got us by the balls uh but xbox uh, and microsoft they were just like uh you know what fine you're right sorry everybody it is a pandemic yeah. maybe maybe we'll address this when uh you know people are working and getting money Netflix has me for another two dollars if they if they go up to fifteen ninety nine I drop them. There you go. You heard it. You heard it here. Netflix, your move. Your move, fuck bags. Though they don't increase their prices all that much anyway. So well, don't say it, that. Yeah. Uh we actually have some comic news. We got some comic news. I, I like how it's it's either nothing in comics or we have something in comics. <laughs> I know, right? Every time. Yeah. So uh, apparently our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, Peter Parker, becomes Venom in Spider-Shadow in April. 
Yeah, this is a, um, a kind of like a what if mini series um, written by Chip Zdarsky, who um, is doing right now, uh, from what I understand, an incredible Daredevil run. Uh, but the nation will know him uh, more specifically from, I think, our first uh, Trading the Backs episode when he wrote Spider-Man Life Story, which I think was, uh, I think it won the Rudy for uh, 2019 uh, mm -hmm. comic. Um, so I'm very excited for this one. Uh, it's basically what happens if uh, Peter Parker just doesn't give up the symbiote and he then becomes uh, Venom. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, I like what they're doing with the symbiote stuff. Like they have the symbiote Spider-Man um, little interstitular books uh, that they put out every so often. Um, and obviously the symbiote is a huge part of uh, the Spider-Man mythos. Yeah, no, agree, agree, and it's it's a great costume too. Yeah, uh, and all this like King King and Black stuff, like oof, that's that's some good stuff too. Yeah. So I mean, Marvel's just ramping stuff up. Uh, in May, we have the uh, Hero Heroes Were Born is a thing again this May. Uh, it looks like a, a, a alternate universe uh, type of thing. Yes. Um, did you see? Have you seen any of the designs? I did. Um. I mean, it's 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 weird, you know. It's almost like they're trying to do an ultimate universe again. Um, and but, if, if that's the case, just give me the ultimate universe again. I know, yeah. Um, but um, for for the, it's weird for them to call it um, Heroes Reborn because um, the whole um, uh, Heroes Reborn was uh, not spawned out of the um, the onslaught saga, um, and basically Marvel kind of sourced out um some of its comics to you know jim lee and um oh uh, who's that Robert who's Field. that guy who did the captain america that big Robert layfield R layfield right thank you um yeah and it was just like it was it was mixed um and then they brought that continuity into the 616 um, right but like I guess they're just sitting on these names. Like I mean, they've reused Secret Wars. They're using yeah. um, Clone Saga is going to be coming back. Um, it just seems like they're uh, they're they're using uh, a new idea with an old name. Yeah, like I just brought up some of the pictures. Mm -hmm. um, you have like Colson for president. Right. You have a uh, Alpha Flight team where it's like Wolverine with like you know. Some of his adamantium is actually showing. He's still got like the uh, prods, like the um, like 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 his Weapon X stuff. Like is right, still, yeah. he's wearing like the Wolverine shirt and cargo pants. Right, Shaman looks like Doctor Strange. Um, you know, it's just very odd. Thanos looks like Thanos. Right, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's Thanos. I've, the only difference is I think the Infinity Gauntlet is on a different hand. Sure. Um. Hulk wearing purple pants again. Um, Enchantress looks, I think that's Enchantress from what I'm seeing. Did you see the Juggernaut Doctor Doom? I did, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty odd stuff, man. I don't know if this has anything, if, if it's going to have anything to do with the pocket dimension uh, that Heroes Reborn took place in, or like we're speculating it's just a completely new universe that they're just, you know, like, right. hey, what if the Avengers didn't exist? I was like, okay. Let's see what happens. So, yeah, and then you have like, Reed Richards, Agent of Shield. Um, pretty interesting, interesting shit. Cool. Um, they also we are also being allowed to vote for the last X Men member on the, a current team that Cyclops and Jean Grey will be running. I'm sorry, okay. Chris, am I boring you? Oh no, you're good. That yeah, came okay. up on audio, huh? Whoops. Yeah. Um, so the candidates that we, we're uh, being allowed to vote for are... Allowed to vote for. Is uh, Armor. I don't know who that is, Tommy. Who is that? He is a Japanese mutant who can create a field of armor around her. Okay. Cool. Pretty on-point name. You look at your sad Palpatine. Uh, How are you seeing me? I can't see you. Oh, I see you, Bubba. Don't worry. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, Banshee. Banshee, right. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Yep. Okay. Cannonball. Cannonball, sure. Forge. Forge, right. Marrow. Marrow, okay. Some good heavy names. Polaris. Polaris. Strong Guy. 
Strong guy. Okay. Sunspot. Sunspot. Uh huh. And Tempo. Now Tempo, I don't I don't know who Tempo is. She was from the uh, MLF Mutant Liberation Front. Okay. Uh, she right. put, like slow time down. I personally voted for Polaris. I was torn between Polaris and Cannonball. Okay. Oh, and um, I'm sorry. Tempo's powers again. She can like slow time down. Okay, like I, permanently or just like around her? Uh, around her. Okay, all right. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So you voted for Polaris. Um, like I said, a lot of heavy hitters um, it, 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 out of those names. Uh, not a lot yeah. of, um, I would have to say just armor and tempo or just obviously two names a non-fan like myself uh, recognized, but um, very established characters. Armor was, was first introduced in the uh, Joss Whedon run. Okay. Uh, Astonishing X Men, which was actually not a bad run, and gotcha. I got weird. That's a pretty good sell. Not a bad run. Hey, look, it, you know it's it's better than what yours. It was fine. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. We yeah we we we, we we're good salesmen uh, on the Rude Boys Power Hour Plus. Um, so uh, Tommy, who who do you know who else is on this team? I do not. I know Cyclops okay. and Jean. I know Cyclops and Jean are are, are the definites. Gotcha. And allegedly, they're going to be it. They're going to relocate themselves on at the Xavier Institute and not on Krakoa. Okay. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll sure. see. We'll see, see how I'm, long. How I'm long the, the I, sorry. Go ahead. We'll see how long the mansion can stand. Yeah, exactly. Not get blown up again. Yeah. Um, I uh, I would just like to know the rest of the team uh, before I make I cast my vote. Um, I'm not going to vote, but you know what I mean. Like I would like to find someone who could complement the rest of the um, the team. Right. That's that's uh, how I would approach this. Yeah, I haven't really like everyone's just been more worried about doing the smear uh, these smear campaigns. Yeah, you were just telling awesome. me about these. Um. Yeah. It's it just. So fantastic. Yeah, I don't see anything that's saying who's going to be on it. Sure. It's kind of odd. All right. Well, no. we're going to find out. I'm assuming uh, maybe in a couple months. Um, well, we're, we're going to find out sooner who wins and then um, the layout of the team. So that's pretty interesting. We'll, uh, we will talk about this again uh, in another Blitzkrieg News when the results are tabulated and we know who is going to be joining the new X-Men team. Totally. Yes. Um, moving on to movies. Yes. Just some trailer talk. Uh, yep. Godzilla vs. Kong. Yes. Um, this comes off of uh, Skull Island, I believe. Yeah, that was the, well, the last one was um, the Godzilla vs. Uh, King of the Monsters or some shit. Yeah. So what, there was Godzilla, uh-huh. and then there was Kong Skull Island. Yep. And then there was the second Godzilla movie. Correct. And then there's this movie now. Correct. Okay. And then people are speculating that there's actually Mecha Godzilla in this, and that's really what's going on. Yeah, um, that because... or that or you know they're going to be fighting, and they're both going to find out that their mother's name is Mothra. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, because okay. no, that's that's what happens when you try to ha- you can't have one of these people be the bad guy. No. Uh, unless it's Freddy versus Jason, and either either way, they still kind of made one a hero yeah, which is just weird right, yeah. it's, like, it's like alien versus predator batman versus superman um yeah we could probably actually hey this might be next month's top 10 of like uh superheroes fighting each other or whatever yeah oh, interesting i like that i like that okay yeah. we'll talk about that all fair uh but yeah the trailer uh was was very typical big monster fighting each other um uh, yep. it's cool to see khan get some uh get some heat you know yeah it looks like kong might be the hero yeah pro- that's what that's what i'm going to assume um yeah. and then godzilla will probably uh be revealed that it is uh mecha godzilla and then real godzilla will show up and then they'll team up and fight uh, Ghidorah or uh, uh ultraman i don't fucking know or doomsday or doomsday ah uh, we gotta move on to tv yes justice league uh, and Justice League and Justice League Unlimited hitting HBO Max February 1st. Um, yeah, so yesterday, as per posting, so go check it out, Rude Nation. Um, but this is big, man, because they have um, the uh, a lot of the uh, Bruce Tim uh, DC animated shit up there already on HBO Max. Um, and 
Justice League and Justice League Unlimited kind of just take the ball that uh, Batman, the animated series and uh, all its incarnations and the Superman series and just kind of introduce more characters. Uh, I love Justice League Unlimited, especially how it ended and kind of tied everything together. Well, I mean, both series are fantastic. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Uh, So it looks like you're going to have some watching to do possibly. Uh, there's a there's a tremendous list of things I have to watch, uh, but this definitely uh, kind of goes up there. Uh, I might have to just do a whole big old DC animated uh, sit down and watch sort of stuff. Um, actually, speaking of uh, on HBO Max, as of the first, again, uh, also is going to be Batman: Brave and the Bold. Uh, okay, which I know people uh, people do like. Um, it's not it, it, if you're going to look into it, looking for something like Batman the animated series, it is not, but it is still pretty entertaining. Um, very cool style. Doesn't Diedrich Bader voice Batman? I believe so, yes. Oswald from uh, the Drew Carey show. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, cool. So, moving along to trailer talk for TV. Let's we... talk some trailers. Uh-huh. Uh, Mighty Ducks, the Game Changers. Yeah, so the new H, uh, I'm sorry, Disney Plus series. Yeah. Looks pretty cool. Um, you know, look, you know, typical Mighty Ducks story, underdogs, you know, come together by one, uh, under one person to form an unstoppable hockey team. Sure. Um, Emilio Estevez is in it, so that's pretty cool. Emilio! Yeah, it looks like he plays the part of, like, the, you know, wise old man but he's kind of crotchety at the same time he's like the mr miyagi yeah 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 or hans from 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 mighty duck the mighty duck one two um i never saw any of the mighty ducks really i might have seen an episode of the cartoon which also has nothing to do with the mighty ducks they were just mighty ducks god i hate you yeah (laughs) what i'm just being honest Moving on. You know me in sports, Tommy. We don't mix. Yeah, but sports shows are good. Some are. Um, Young Rock. This So, yeah, this this is more my speed. Um, yeah, no, it, same here. What was that? I said same here. Yeah. Um, uh, this really just kind of, it seems just like a puff piece. I can't see this being so very long. It, it, it's a, it's a, sitcom documentary of uh, Dwayne Johnson's early childhood, um, growing up as the son of uh, Rocky Johnson and um, uh, around all these professional wrestlers uh, in the uh, 80s, um, and then going into uh, f- his football career. Um, that seems to be where it kind of stops, um, pretty oh, much see. him entering the University of Miami. Um, and it's under the guise that he is doing a sit down interview with, um, we spoke about him in the uh, the Rude Boys Reacts for WandaVision. Uh, Agent Wu. Agent Wu, yes. Um, He's sitting down with Dwayne Johnson because he's doing a run for president. Uh, I think it was like 2032 or something like that. Right. Um, And I'm going to be honest, like this seems so very like safe. Like it's like already Dwayne Johnson, I think is pretty well liked. Oh yeah, yeah. And this just seems to be like, how can we make him more likable? Um, I do like how he seems to really kind of be heavy in um, talking about the wrestling aspect because that is, I would have to say, the most interesting thing Uh about his childhood. Um, Sure. Agreed. Not knowing much about his childhood, but um, from a wrestling fan's perspective. But he seems to really kind of talk and and like tip his hat to that, um, to the history of it, which is cool. Yeah, I like in the uh, trailer where, like, you know, a bunch of them are, it looks like it's his father and junkyard dog talking at the dinner table, and you just hear Rock, uh, the Rocco like this go, well, wrestling's fake. And they all right. just kind of look at him like, kid, we will put you through this fucking table. Basically, yeah. Um, yeah, you got, like, actors portraying, uh, like we said, Rocky Johnson, uh, junkyard dog, the wild Samoans, uh, Andre, the giant, uh, even a little bit of macho man. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I dig that. I, I I I like stuff like that. I agree. Um, speaking of wrestling, we got some wrestling news, Tommy. Yeah, we do. Uh, WWE Network 
to be engulfed by the peacock. And now you're going to be paying for that cock. There you go. Yuck, 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 yuck. Yuck, 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 yuck. Um, <clears throat> As far as I know, like, most of Peacock Network is free. Um, I believe that, like, I think we were talking, like, this is going to be, like, I think it's still going to keep its $9.99. Um, so, uh, the, the, this kind of really did come out of nowhere. Um, and I'm assuming this really is going to, no. <laughs> this, uh, this definitely ruffled some, uh, I don't want to say feathers, uh, because that's a, that's a bird joke and I'm, I'm better than that. It definitely rubbed people the wrong way. I know ESPN dropped all their WWE content, whatever they had, um, because I assume they wanted to get so- something out of that. And I'm sure Fox isn't happy either, uh, because, uh, NBC, owns usa network um and then you know they just had a lucrative deal at fox what two years ago yeah uh for smackdown so like now they're getting more into bed with the nbc side of it so i who knows uh vince is obviously rich as fuck now um why he's you know firing people who knows but uh whatever so the network and all its content is now going to be uh, uh available on the peacock and tommy you're right i think there is a, a it is tiered um if you want to like watch it i think just straight up i think it's free uh it's on demand with ads i think is 4.99 which i think anyone who is subscribing to the network currently that's what they roll into okay uh, a 4.99 plan i believe um, and then there is a 9.99 that I guess has no ads. Um, that's uh, what we got now. So who knows what they're gonna do? Um, I mean, the network, as of right now, I, I think came a very long way, uh, but just I don't think really could scratch the surface of getting uh, in bed with something like uh, NBC, uh, the Peacock sort of thing. Um, sure. It's just gonna be more eyes on it, which which is always cool. Yeah, or it could make the product suffer because there are going to be more eyes. It, you're, you know, you're, you're possibly right. So yeah. we're going to see what happens. It's still very early. Uh, to know. Um, and I think this happened in what mid March. This uh, shift two, over. Two weeks before Mania. Yeah. So there you go. That that's how they do that because they know people are going to watch for Mania. So wait, that means they're going to be taking the WWE Network app off of like the Playstations and everything. I'd imagine so. You'll probably fire it up and then it'll say like this ad, this app isn't supported anymore. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Kind of dumb, but interesting. This is this is the world we're going into. It's going to be big mega corporations. I know. Uh, you know Everything Disney has owns all their content. Um, it, it, Universal, um, I'm sorry, NBC owns all their, their stuff. So. Right. Okay. Let me tell you something. Wars. I'll tell you something, brother, about Corona Mania. Oh yeah, we just did a uh, hype episode, so obviously now you know it's cursed. Yeah, Once exactly. With like that, uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife got moved to 11 11 2021 this year. Yep, that. So it's still still this year for now. Oh, my movie has gotten pushed back another year, Morbius. Oh, oh Michael Morbius. Oh, oh. We're sorry to hear that. I'm never gonna get my plasma. Well, hopefully, uh, Michael, maybe you can come back and host the Rudies again next year, um, and, and then we can definitely do some uh, some prom- some promotion for the movie. How, how about that? Would you like that? I want nothing to do with you. You guys are curses. <laughs> yeah, but you're you're a living vampire. I think you're already cursed, my man. You're a curse. My uh, movie now comes out January twenty first. I'm okay. We're gonna we're gonna write that in tentatively, Michael. All right. I hate to say it. The world is still a fucked up place, but we hope to see your movie soon. Ah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> All right. Get, Get out of here. <laughs> Uncharted. Uncharted gets moved to 211 2022. Yep. So another movie that I mean, Jesus Christ, has just been bumped pre-pandemic. Um, my movie's never coming out. It's never happening. Never. All right. And that's all we have for Blitzkrieg. Uh, so, Tommy, 
you know what is not an item in Mario Kart? Ketchup. Ketchup is not a, uh, a oh, but we could have made a catch up with we because you're racing and shit. Oh yeah, we could have made that joke. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's catch up. Um, I don't see anything on your list, Tom, because I know you oh. like to bust my fucking balls. What? Oh, sorry. I so I freaking just Final Fantasy. Uh huh. The, the Final Fantasy Odyssey. We're, we're calling yes. it. So I'm um, on chapter yeah. four of Final <clears throat> Fantasy VII Remake. Um, trudging along in 14 still, doing some side quests to get to the next uh, batch of story. Sure. Um, still playing in 10, still playing in 8. I've uh, been playing Hades. Um, well, I started this show on Netflix called The Last Kingdom. Okay. Um, takes place during the time when the Vikings invaded England and you have the Saxons who are trying to teach the Vikings about Christianity, and it's just a clash of like di- two different cultures. Okay, cool, cool. And then I also just watch Fortune of Fire because it's just fun and stupid to watch. Right, yes. I know we were talking about that off air. Yeah. So that's yes. good. You've been up to quite a few things. I have, yes. Um, so it is, um, I'm kind of planning out this year as far as what games I'm replaying. Uh, we um, talked about this. Uh, I think during the I think during the hype episode, it is uh, the 35th anniversary of Legend of Zelda series, 35th yeah. anniversary of the Metroid series, 35th anniversary of the Kid Icarus series, and also the 40th anniversary of the Donkey Kong series. Um, so with that being said, um, those first three franchises I'm kind of trying to plan out, um, especially if Nintendo might do something. You know, maybe they'll re-release the, um, you know, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask yeah. or something like that. Or the, we'll finally get the Metroid Prime trilogy. I ain't doing shit. <laughs> Tom, you never know, man. I would never thought that they would have ever released those 3D Mario games. Um, and they did. So. They ain't doing shit and you know it. <laughs> we'll find out, all right? It's still January as of recording, so. You're a fool. Um, but I'm getting I'm getting started though. I got uh, I was playing some Donkey Kong games um, uh, via the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System Online app of the Switch. Uh, okay. So I played Donkey Kong one, two, and three. Obviously, not the best ways to play those games. You should probably play like the arcade archives or something like that. Whatever. Okay. I have the fucking games, right? Get off my case. Um, so I played Donkey Kong, uh, like I said, uh, not two, but I played Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. and Donkey Kong 3. Uh-huh. Um, I'm a big fan of Donkey Kong 3. I don't know why. I think just because it's kind of like a like a shoot 'em up a little bit. Beat 'em up. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, you, you beat up things via projectiles, Arr. I guess. Um, but uh, Donkey Kong, uh, I think a classic uh, little single screen platformer. Um, I played the three levels that came with the NES because you don't have oh. the, I think it's the Cement Factory mm-hmm. the NES portion. Uh, I did those three levels and I'm like, cool, beat the game. Uh, beat Donkey Kong Jr. for the first time. Um, just again, getting to the quote unquote credits, you know, uh-huh. like he saves Donkey Kong, that's it. Uh, sure. Donkey Kong 3 just keeps on going. So I got to a point, I'm just like, you know what, I'm good. This is just going to get harder and more score attacky and I'm fine sure. with that. I did also play through Donkey Kong Country on the Super NES uh, online app. Um, Donkey Kong Country uh, and that trilogy of games um, was was a big hit for me growing up. And I remember looking forward to each and every holiday season uh, in that three year stint uh, to receive the Donkey Kong Country, uh, whichever one that was that that year. Um, You wanted to receive Donkey Kong. that's, That's your takeaway? (laughs) <laughs> god um well you know, fun, fun fact i think the donkey kong country um got a lot of hype out of me because of uh obviously the graphics were uh at the time very impressive um you know they were using pre-rendered um sprites uh, that made the game look next gen at the time um but uh nintendo power sent out a vhs tape hyping up the game itself and I think that did a lot to kind of kind of get me anticipated for the game. I'm pretty sure that whole video is up on YouTube. If uh, it, it, it's it's corny, it's definitely uh, it's Nintendo being like, "Hey, Nintendo's games are great. 
you should get out this Nintendo game, you know? So, uh, but, but it's a lot of fun. Um, Donkey Kong Country, though. I'm still here, by the way. What was that, Tommy? I'm still here, by the way. I don't want you to think I left. No, that's okay. Um, <laughs> Donkey Kong Country um, did not necessarily age well. Um, okay. It's still fine. Um, Rare did this thing with, you know, Super Mario World, um, Legend of Zelda, where they take what Nintendo did and kind of put their own spin on it, uh, for better or worse. So Donkey Kong Country doesn't necessarily play like a game like Super Mario World, but it is definitely a a huge send-off from it. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's it's still a good game, don't get me wrong. Um, It's just, you know, not... Uh, not properly aged. Um, the newer Donkey Kong Country games are probably where it's at for that. Right. Right. Okay, it's not a well aged cheese. It's not. It's not a well aged cheese. It's still a good cheese. It's just like okay. mm, I don't know. I know people love Donkey Kong Country too. Um, I think my nostalgia goes for the first one more. The the other two games are fine in their own right. Um, but I think I just have the more nostalgia on Donkey Kong Country, uh, the right. first one. Okay. So there you go with that. Um, real quick on the video game front, uh, there were a bunch of demos that I got uh, on the Switch. Um, Bayland Wonderworld demo. Um, this is a game put out by Yuji Naka. He's the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, okay. This demo just kind of sucks. Uh, <laughs> it's it, There's wow. just a lot going on. I kind of had to stop playing it because I'm just like, there's just so many things. I'm just like, ah, like what, what, what's going on? Like it, it doesn't control great. Um, the sound is weird. It's a lot of like, what is going on? Uh, wasn't feeling it. I tried the demo for this game called Fuser. Um, it's a harmonics rhythm based game, um, where you're a DJ. Um, and it's not like DJ hero or even like the guitar hero games or anything like that, where you just have all these licensed songs and you can mix them as you see fit. Um, you can get like the percussion, the vocals, uh, the beat and all this shit from all different songs, mash them up. Uh, it's very similar to Harmonix's um, attempt at a board game called Drop Mix, huh. where you would take a uh, like a card that has a song on it, and you could put it in the you know uh, percussion portion or the uh, brass section or the vocal section, and just mix up songs. Um, it's pretty cool. The demo is a little. Uh, I think it only has like eight songs in it. Obviously, they don't want to give you the whole fucking thing. Uh, but I'm very interested in it, and it very it's it's very easy to kind of get into, fool around, and and come up with something cool. Mm-hmm. So, I'm very yeah. interested. I might pursue that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It does not sound like a Tom game. No, it's definitely not a Tom game. Uh, unless they had like a big like metal. I mean, well, Tom, what are your thoughts on like mashup songs? You know what I mean? What do you mean mashup songs? Like, what if they took um. I don't know, like uh, the vocals from a Metallica song, and the they, they mixed it with, I don't know, some other, some other band. I, I can't tell you. you to... It doesn't suck. I'll listen to it. Okay, so there you go. But now you're you're in the driver's seat with these. Eh. All right. Not a Tom game. Uh, <clears throat> Tom, have you ever played any of the Hitman games? Nope. Okay. Uh, I don't believe in being stealthy. Yeah, no, this this wouldn't be for you. Um, the I, I dabbled a little bit with the Hitman Three on Switch. Uh, it's the cloud version of it. Um, I've never played a Hitman game, and thankfully, this uh, because it's a cloud demo, not a demo really. It's the cloud version. They let you demo a little bit of the game to kind of see if your internet can handle it. Right. Um, and uh, mine could not. Uh, and it really started getting hairy uh, towards the end. But the couple minutes that I was able to play um, was kind of fun. Um, and I and I definitely want to kind of revisit this series at some point. Huh, interesting. Try to, try to get something uh, maybe on PS4 for cheap or something like that. I don't yeah, know. This whole cloud thing is weird. What was that? The whole cloud thing that they do is weird. You know what? If If it's something that works for the user sure you know what i mean like i I, you know me tommy i like my physical games um because you never know if that may go down at some point yep um but you know if it works it works and hell i was playing a game that came out on ps4 ps5 xbox one xbox series x 
on my Nintendo Switch, which should not happen. Okay. So that was kind of interesting. Um, and then yeah, I was playing a whole lot of Mario Kart, which we're going to get into, uh, a lot of research. Mm-hmm. I did watch some movies. Uh, Tommy, you saw Jojo Rabbit, right? I did. I loved it. Yeah. I liked it a lot, too. Um, it was it was very wholly original. Uh, our boy Tequila Wakanda uh, tells us the story of a young uh, Hitler youth who is kind of basically questioning everything that he's been told. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think uh, Tequila did a great job as uh, Mr. Adolf Hitler, sure. <clears throat> making him such a dick. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I was just like... <laughs> kill her but 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 why <laughs> like yeah. like just how he quite like mm-hmm. like he started questioning everything yeah no he was uh um, yeah that was good um I'm, I'm gonna spoil yeah. it real quick mm-hmm. the um when you find out his mom dies that was rough that was that was surprising because we saw the way that that scene plays out you think just some you think something bad's gonna happen to the kid yeah um and then it turns out it's like, oh, the kid's fine. They killed his mom. Yeah. Because exactly. she was like a resistance uh, within Nazi Germany. Yeah. Hey, um, <laughs> uh, Stephen Merchant. As, yeah. uh, like the what? SS. Uh, yeah. SS or Gestapo. Gestapo, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. I, fucking hysterical. Like, I, I, I don't want to say hysterical. You know what I mean, though. No, I know, I know exactly what you mean, yeah. You know, I don't want to be insensitive. Right. It was enjoyable. Yes! Which is still weird to say about a World War II. Very true, uh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't, like, hold both sides equal. Like, you know, right. the Nazis were fucking scumbags. Nazis are still scumbags. Hot take. Um, I don't think that's a hot take. <laughs> well, I, I, ho- I really hope it's not. I'll just put it that way. I, I, I mean, he me. <laughs> I truly, truly hope it's not. Um, uh, but it, it, was, it was pretty good. Definitely enjoy it. Yes. Um, I enjoyed watching The Invisible Man. Uh, this okay. movie, I believe, came out last year. Uh, did you see this yet, Tom, or no? Have not. Okay. Um, don't want to spoil anything. It's It's really well done. Is it? Okay. Yeah, check it out. It's on HBO Max. That's how uh, Bonnie and I watched it. Excellent. Good to know. Yeah. Um, we also watched King of Staten Island. This how was is it? a movie with Pete Davidson, uh, Bill Burr, Marissa Tomei. Uh, it was it was good. Had some funny parts in it. Um, very much a autobiography sort of for Pete Davidson, talking about it, how his father passed. Uh, you know, it, he mentions it in his stand-ups constantly. His father was a firefighter who uh, died in 9-11. Right, um, right. So they talk about that, uh, not the 9-11 portion. They kind of, you know, make it a little more uh, just kind of his father died in a fire. Like, that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it is kind of, a, I don't want to say heartwarming, but like, you know, he goes through a change. He kind of grows up a little bit um, after dealing with, you know, that trauma. Um, but it, it's a nice, it's a nice watch. Okay. I'll say that. Um and then the last thing on my list, Tommy, which I'm gonna I'm gonna not tell you so much about, because uh, I definitely want you to check it out if you haven't already. I don't, I don't know. We've never talked about this. Uh, it's on Netflix. Uh, it's called Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun. Uh, it's about six episodes. It's a it's kind of a sketch comedy about these three dudes. Uh, they're like an Australian comedy group. Um, it is fucking off the wall. Tommy, you and your brother or whomever have to get a little tipsy and watch it. I don't think anybody really should watch this sober. Um, not saying not I, I, I'm not saying that because it's bad, but I'm saying it, it is just so absurd that you need you need to be in the right headspace. You need to be a little oh. silly. You can't just watch it like what is this? You know what I mean? Like you got to be like. You gotta be you gotta be a little like you know loose in the head to be like oh my god this fucking thing is hilarious. Um, okay. It's like six episodes or something like that. Uh, we watched it and we had a great time. So uh, I recommend it. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm gonna have to say that's all I've been up to. Wow, you've been a busy little bee in two weeks. Yeah, haven't had much to do anything. 
Haven't done anything. But, Tommy, like I mentioned before, I would be playing a lot of Mario Kart, a lot of Mario Kart research for uh-huh. our big Mario Kart episode. Yep. So what do you say? We're going to hit the gas on two and do a little nitro boost. I always fuck that up. Yeah, I know. We'll talk about it. Um, so here we go. Mario Kart uh, started the franchise off September 1st, 1992. Uh-huh. Um, big, I mean, th- th- this was the first of its kind. This was the first character-based kart game that spawned so many copycats. Um, you know, Sonic had his, Crash had his, uh, Konami did a crazy kart racer or some shit like that. Uh, Diddy Kong Racing was a big one that that kind of spawned out of this. Th- this was something that was never done before. All racing games were just cars. Um, even yeah. you know Nintendo had its own racing series in F Zero, um, which was a Super Nintendo game, which highlighted their Mode Seven graphics, which did the whole you know pseudo three D kind of spin the world mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Um, but to its detriment, it wasn't multiplayer. So they made a multiplayer racing game through Mario and Mario characters into it. And lo and behold, man, I mean, uh, I have sales numbers too. Like I I did some research here. Super Mario Kart, uh, year to date. Crazy. What was that? Yeah, no, this this is, when it's a video game thing, like the Zelda episode, the Mario episode, this, I'm all about it, baby. Uh, Super Mario Kart, uh, year to date, uh, or lifetime to date, uh, 8.7 million. Wow. And uh, it's the fourth best-selling Super Nintendo game. Interesting. Uh, obviously, in addition to Super Nintendo, it's on the Wii and Wii U virtual consoles. It's on the Switch Online. It's on the Super Nintendo Classic. Uh, I believe it's also on the 3DS virtual console. Don't quote me on that. <clears throat> but, you know, Super Mario Kart started this whole genre, basically, of like character-based kart games. What was that? I'm actually about to fire it up. Yeah? Yeah. So Super Mario Kart, like we like, like I was saying, um, it, it brought us, you know, Grand Prix, Mode Seven graphics, um, Battle Mode. Um, I know I, ha- I have a huge history of Battle Mode. Uh, I played this game with my cousin growing up, and it, it was just insane. Uh, Battle Mode specifically. Tommy, right. you got any uh, Super Mario Kart memories? Jesus Christ, uh, Mario Kart is one of those ones that it's just it, it like you said, it's timeless like to me right. i really enjoy it right now i'm having issues trying to ignite uh even fucking drive i'm about to get uh lapped um yeah it's been it, it, yo i do remember playing this at my friend's house sure like you know for uh first time gotcha. and it just it blew it it blew us all away, like you know, you know, for you know, for the time that it was, because this was also the time where yeah, Super Nintendo was huge. Yes, and you know, we played a lot of like one-player games, like you know, Castlevania, like you know, taking turns on Castlevania, and none of us really lo- like. We would always just switch the controller back, and this was like one of the first, uh, you know two play uh multiplayer games where we were like oh crap we we, we can we can actually all play together yeah and i know Tommy, you're, you're playing it right now but like the game was made for multiplayer like you can see like this you're in constant split screen all the time yeah which i uh, again I, I i dig yeah um i mean it's very weird playing it right now without the with, you know, without like, you know, the drift. Actually, it does have drift. It does have a little bit of a drift, yeah. So, um, like we're like we're saying, this this game, um, to today's standards, may not hold up. Possibly not the best Mario Kart, but 
you know, like it, it's the stepping stone. It's the genesis of this whole franchise. Yeah. So we have to we have to give credit where credit is due. Absolutely. Um, moving on, uh, and, and I'm just going to make a quick note. Uh, there was talk of a Virtual Boy Mario Kart, which was going to come out, really? but uh, the Virtual Boy uh, stank on ice. Uh, so, you know, no Mario oh, Kart for that weird. system. Ow, wow, 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 wow. Uh, Mario Kart 64 came out February 10th, 1997. Oh, this uh, one. Nintendo 64. Uh, yeah. Also available on the Wii Virtual Console, the Wii U Virtual Console. Um, granted, uh, the Wii Virtual Console is uh, no more any, but whatever. Um, it was at some point. Mario Kart 64, uh, 9.8 million uh, copies sold. Two, number two in the uh, N64 uh, games. What the fuck am I trying to say? Second best selling N64 game is what I meant to say without all that verbal diarrhea. Uh, but Mario Kart 64, that that's kind of that's where it hit for me. Um, okay. Great graphics, 3D courses, um, battle mode, man. Block Fort, I would play that shit with my uh, high school buddies growing up. Man, oh man, just oh, the balloon? nonstop. Yeah. yeah, no, we used to we we, we used to have a lot of good battle modes. Uh, yes. Going. Oh yeah. Uh, we would do, um, like I said, like block fort. Everybody would get their own block corner and just okay. kind of like drop shells, drop banana peels, and like you had to kind of climb the tower to get there. So huh. it was great. Yeah, it was like you had to keep like your own little fort secure. Right. So the imagination of youths, my friend. Hey, you know, the, you know, I, that's actually, that's kind of vicious though. What do you I mean? Like like just like okay you know kind of being like if you know cl- like you said climbing the tower and I, I don't i never even thought of doing that yeah like, no, it, was, it was just something that we we just kind of uh we took the game and adapted it i don't know if i've ever mentioned um how i used to play golden eye but um it would be the same thing where like we would just make our own little mini games within the multiplayer games and um just kind of go at it make it our own basically which was cool you 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 kids are so smart we used to just kill each other well i mean yeah we would do that too but you well, know, no, we, like we, we, we do a little like, fun shit like a savage oh yeah no they're, they're, they're <clears throat> no fun it was just just destruction oh absolutely understandable completely That's all it was. uh the next installment in the mario kart franchise mario kart super circuit Came out August 27th, 2001 for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, this game is available on the Wii U Virtual Console. And it was also available as a 3DS Ambassador game, uh, which was one of those uh, when the 3DS came out. Uh, sales weren't so great. So they cut the price 100 bucks, And anyone who bought it prior to that was able to get these uh, 10 free games. And one of them being Mario Kart Super Circuit. Uh, oh. This game takes a lot of the graphics from Mario Kart 64 in the driver sense, but it's a return to kind of like the Super Mario Kart uh, uh, of the layouts of the levels. Um, in addition, actually, all the courses from Super Mario Kart are unlockable in Super Circuit, uh, which is actually, this is the first time they touch on retro tracks. Okay. Uh, which is something that becomes a, a series staple later down. Um, but Super Circuit, uh, like I said, plays a lot like Super Mario 64. I'm sorry, plays a lot like Super Mario Kart. Um, looks and feels a little like Mario Kart 64. Um, so it's this weird, like, in between, like, hey, it's Mario Kart. It's on the Game Boy Advance now. Like, that's it. It doesn't really do anything spectacular. Um, mm-hmm. And to be honest, I put a lot of time into this recently, playing, uh, planning this episode. Uh, yeah, man. For you some can... reason, I don't know why, it was just on my 3DS, and I'm like, eh, I could play Mario Kart 7, I could play Mario Kart DS, I'll, I'll play Super Circuit. And I, you know, I played a lot of Super yeah. Circuit, I don't know why. It's it's like the, the stepchild of uh, this franchise. <laughs> you know, I, you know I, and I'm sure you'll tell me when the courses actually got to be a little bit longer. Well, I, I'm not going to lie, like, I feel like the, the, the courses... Like uh, Wario Stadium in Super Mario, I'm sorry, Mario Kart 64, long as fuck, man. Even on like 150cc, like that game, that takes forever. Right. 
Um, so like the courses all had their own. I, I would have to say in, in Mario Kart 64, they started getting real, real long um, okay. because like you know they were putting hills and shit and shortcuts and whatnot. Uh, yeah, Mario Kart. I'm uh, sorry, Super Mario Kart. I'm, you're playing right now. You'll lap people easily. Oh, I got lapped. Yeah. Yeah, or you'll get lapped too. Exactly. <clears throat> but Mario Kart 64 um it definitely added a lot of the uh the 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 course layout definitely got longer um actually we'll take this time to talk about the uh ai in these games uh is notorious um i know in super mario kart they get real ridiculous at about 150 cc all the computer characters have their own special items that you don't have access to and um rubber banding is a serious thing when it comes to this series um, for good or bad, for good, because, you know, if you're in first and you're lapping everybody, you're untouchable. So, you know, what they'll do is if the characters are behind you, yeah, maybe the computer will get a little, a little fast, you know, and kind of get up right behind you, you know, maybe they don't, they're not supposed to go that fast, but hey, it makes for a more interesting and fun game. Um, and obviously Mario Kart 64 introduced the blue shell as well. Um, again, for better or worse, but, you know, it's a staple. Shell. Yeah. It's a staple in the game. You can't, you can't, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, but we were talking about Super Mario, uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit. Uh, Five point nine million copies sold. Uh, fourth best selling game on the Game Boy Advance. Um, have you? Did you play this game, Tom, at all? Circuit? No. Okay. Does not sound familiar at all. Sure. It, it again. It's such a non offensive Mario Kart game. It just kind of like came and went, sort of thing. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, two years later, November 17th, 2003, for the GameCube, Mario Kart Double Dash. Yeah. Uh, the GameCube era was weird for a lot of franchises. Um, they gave uh, Mario a backpack and he could uh, float around using water. They made Zelda uh, a cartoon. They made Metroid a first person game. And they allowed you to have two drivers on Mario Kart. Um, I love it. <clears throat> oh, so do I. Um, I. I dug it first thing, man. Um, it's actually the only really like unaccessible Mario Kart game by modern uh, uh, by modern conventions right now. Only available on the GameCube as of now. Uh, hopefully that changes. Six point eight million copies sold. Second best GameCube game. I'm going to assume only behind uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee, but I don't have that number in front of me. But Double Dash. Um, introduces obviously more characters two characters per cart um first time you can actually switch carts uh, uh -huh. everyone else had like the weird um you know pipe frame or whatever uh who were your main in a uh, double dash tommy uh luigi and uh yoshi luigi and yoshi nice a little green team you got going on oh yeah my uh my mains were waluigi and bowser jr okay uh, so most yeah. mostly for their specials because Wario okay. and Waluigi had the bomb, Bowser and Bowser Jr. had the big old Koopa shell. I don't yeah. remember. I don't remember what uh, Yoshi and um. I don't remember what Yoshi or Luigi had. Yoshi special. had a had a big old egg he could throw, and like that would shoot out items. And, okay. Um, Mario and Luigi had the uh, fireballs. All oh, right, there makes yeah. sense. Uh, but yeah, it brings back kind of like special items for everybody um, that were accessible, which was cool. Um, yeah, Double Dash I had a great time with. Um, the two-person cart thing I think really needs to come back. We're going to talk about what we kind of want to see out of the franchise. Uh, but I think we're both in agreement that we want like a Double Dash mode in some yeah. sort of game. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Just bring, maybe just put Double Dash on the Switch, you know? Do it, you cowards. Um, so after Double Dash, we, uh, Mario Kart kind of got, uh, I don't want to say weird. They put out a arcade game, um, which was, uh, co-produced by Bando, Na Bando, uh, Namco Bandai. Uh, and I also think Sega had a part in this, at least with like the arcade, uh, portion of this. Mm -hmm. uh, but they made Mario Kart Arcade GP. Um, according to my notes, it came out in October of 05. And um, it's Mario Kart in an arcade. Um, I was watching it. Um, it's definitely arcade heavy. The courses are very bland and reused a lot because, again, right. they're not, not going to be sitting there for, you know, 12 hours playing the game. You could, but you're paying for that. Uh-huh. 
Um, and this is actually the first Mario Kart game um, to introduce non-Nintendo characters, or non-Mario characters specifically. Because uh, I think Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, and Blinky are in this game. Oh, jeez. Yeah, because again, it's a, it's a Namco joint game. So How does the ghost drive with no, no hands? Well, not it's not not the Boo Ghost, uh, Blinky. The you know he he's got hands. He does. Nope. Look it up. Google it. Them ghosts have hands. Mm, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it while you talk. All right, cool. I'm gonna say you're wrong. No. Yeah. Tom, there's plenty of characters we're gonna talk about that I'm like, how the fuck are they driving? But whatever. Um, but yeah, it kind of introduces this weird, like, side spin-off uh, Mario Kart game. And obviously, when they start numbering these games in a couple of years, um, those games don't count. Uh, but they count for the episode, they count for the podcast, they count for the nation. So we're talking about it. Uh, but we got more to talk about in the form of Mario Kart DS. Came out November 14th, 2005, so uh, about a month after uh, Arcade GP. Came out on DS and uh, also available on the Wii U Virtual Console. Sold 23 million, uh, the highest selling Mario Kart game as of then. Uh, it is also the third best selling DS game behind, I'm going to get some sort of Pokemon or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but Mario Kart DS put a ton of time into um, uh, a lot of fun, uh, has a mission mode. Uh, which I think is great for single player uh, peoples. Uh, you basically just, you're like, you know, collect the coins, uh, go through the loops, uh, the hoops, I'm sorry. Uh, had like bosses you would race against or fight. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Um, is what Mario, is well, this that, one decided to go to work late to go pick up? No, no, no. That was, uh, I think that was eight, but you know, we'll get to that. Uh, did you play Mario Kart DS at all, Tommy? I want to say yes. Okay. I think it was seven. We decided to go to work late. No way to know. Um, but Mario Kart DS, um, no uh, notorious uh, also for a lot of exploits the game had. Um, using uh, the power drift uh, back and forth, back and forth, back right. and forth. The technique called snaking uh, was kind of... Um, introduced in this game uh not officially obviously people uh would would find the game and exploit it online this is also the first online mario kart game uh which is also unaccessible now because the uh nintendo wi-fi connection is kaput yeah uh, but ds is, is kind of more modernizing what mario kart becomes uh-huh um so that's pretty good so, yeah, I mean, I know you said that this was um, the first one to play online. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I've actually played Mario Kart online until uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, you know what? Um, Mario Kart DS is my first ever instance of playing a game online. Okay. Uh, you know, I never did it on console. Nintendo was real uh cold to uh do that stuff um actually uh so i was i was it, it, i barely played this game online but it is the first online game i played actually just uh, a real quick aside going back to double dash um double dash had a LAN feature um which would allow people to bring their game cubes to a location hook them up to a router and then you're playing like local multiplayer uh but everyone has their own screen I believe you can play up to 16 players because wow. of the double dash feature, the, 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 the two people per. Um, I never got that crazy. I think the most I ever played with was three GameCubes, and that was a ton of fun. Right. So I'm going to give a shout out uh, on Twitter to those boys. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was a ton of fun, man. Uh, just, you know, multiplayer is one thing uh, on one system, and then just everybody has their own screen. Everybody has their own system, their controller. A lot of fun. I am just realizing now I do not have Mario Kart Wii on my notes. Start the episode over. Yep, so cancel. Exit out. <laughs> uh, 2008, uh, in April, uh -huh. Mario Kart Wii. Um, 
motion control, obviously, to the system. So Mario Kart had to include some sort of uh, twisty turny shit, which it did. Um, but you can use a ton of controllers with it. Um, Mario Kart Wii is a, is kind of a little bit of a stopgap for me. Um, it's a little bit of a blank spot. Mm-hmm. I played it. I hated how it looked. I did not like how it played. And I kind of dropped it. Um, the battle mode isn't as good as like 64 was. Didn't have a lot of the bells and whistles Mario Kart DS had. Um, but 37 million people can't be wrong. Uh, Because that's the sales uh, that it took in. Uh, Second best selling Wii game, I'm going to assume, behind Wii Sports. Um, But I mean, in in this generation with DS and Wii, Mario Kart's a heavy hitter. It always was, but I think because it was on systems like the Nintendo DS and the Wii, it was just, it was a a must have. Right, right. Yeah. Um, Any thoughts on Mario Kart Wii, Tommy, that you have? Was this the. They 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 had the, the steering wheel for this, right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, this is the first time I used the steering wheel. Okay. Not in life, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah, no, you I, know, I I dabbled hard. a little bit into it, but I was mostly playing it with the with the classic controller, or the GameCube controller at the time. Right. Uh, I believe I was using. No, I couldn't use the wave bird. Can I? Were you able to use the wave bird on the Wii? I forget. Yeah, you can. Anything that had yeah. like a connection on it. Yeah. yeah I was using the wave bird. Yeah, hell yeah. Virgo is one of the best controllers. Agreed, yes. Um, but Mario Kart Wii, again, uh, I don't really have much memory towards it. I have played it yeah. recently, again, to kind of research for the episode. It's it's definitely fine. The courses are really cool, like Coconut Mall, Maple Tree Way. Um, okay. they, they are a lot of fun. There's some very unique courses, um, but just, you know, I just, uh, it just looked ugly. <laughs> That's where I'm at with that. Yeah. A lot of games looked ugly on the Wii. That that's very true, yes. But I mean, even it looked be- Mario Kart looked better on the GameCube. Yeah, that was the thing that kind of bugged me the most. I was just like, Ugh. okay, yeah, yeah, could understand that. It's like, wow. um, yeah. Uh, the game also introduces bikes. Uh, Tom, what's your thought on the bike system of Mario Kart? You you you, you want to have a good time? You want you you, you could watch me on the uh, on the motorcycles, and I just go flying off. <laughs> nice yeah, yeah. I, I never i never got into it i thought they were just a little too unwieldy the, um, close, the closest the bikes i'll use are like the four are, are like the atvs <clears throat> sure i got you so um but yeah mario kart we again uh, a very popular game like we just said with, with the sales numbers um but it just didn't really uh didn't really hit for me um whatever Uh, Moving on, though, uh, 2008, uh, there was also an update to Mario Kart GP in the form of Mario Kart GP2. Um, It it introduced a couple more characters, uh, but it was kind of more of the same, just a a kind of a a, a spiffier version of Mario Kart Arcade GP. Nothing else really to say about it. Again, it doesn't count because according to Nintendo, they're at this point in December 4th, 2011, there were only seven Mario Kart games, including Mario Kart 7. Um, so yeah, the arcade games don't count. Deal with it. Um, come out for the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, has sold 18 million units and is the best-selling Nintendo 3DS game. Um, Mario Kart 7 was needed for the Nintendo 3DS because, like we said earlier, the Nintendo 3DS was kind of floundering, couldn't get its feet and uh, needed something and it needed a Mario Kart and it needed a Mario game, which it did get. Uh, But Mario Kart 7 is a fine, fine Mario Kart game that is missing a lot. Um, It is missing a lot of standard characters. It's definitely, it's missing my boy Waluigi, uh, who has been a staple since Double Dash. Um, It's missing uh, a couple of, what, what was that? Waluigi sucks. Ah, Waluigi is the best. Waluigi. Wah. Uh, thank you, Waluigi, for chiming in. <laughs> um, it was definitely rushed. Um, in, in the same aspect too, like uh, Nintendo outsourced um some of their tracks to their uh, subsidiary Retro Studios. Uh, Retro oh. Studios also, oddly enough, did the retro courses in this. Um, to get Nintendo some, you know, time to get everything going. Uh, they right. needed to get this game out. That's the deal. 
Um, so a lot of concessions were made. Um, however, it did introduce the world to uh, driving underwater now in a Mario Kart game, gliding in a Mario Kart game, and mm -hmm. kart customization, yes. which I just hate. I do not like kart customization at all. Why? Because I don't feel no, like it's translated enough of what the hell I'm doing. I don't know. Sounds like you're just being a curmudgeon. Not, I mean, not at all. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it, if I wanted to get into the nitty gritty and see like which tires are best or which works best for me, like I just like to play who I like to play and I like to drive something that looks cool. Like that's it. I don't need to, I don't need to be like, oh, this glider looks like this or, you know, these wheels have better handling. Like it, it, it's, it's a little too much, uh, especially for like a fun party game like Mario Kart. You could still have fun and customize. Okay, so Tom, you customize your carts every single time? Actually, I do. Okay. It's like to the same one, or you're just like, mm, my performance could be better if I no, switched I, out no, these I, Volkswagen wheels. No, I actually do look at the status of like, you know, hey, okay, I get better handling with this cart with these top and these tires. The only thing I don't really customize is the hang uh the glider because yeah i don't think the glider really does anything it's just the if aesthetic I like, if i like the design of the glider i'm going to use it oh yeah no same i just like the pitch st shit that looks cool that's it okay and if it drives well then guess what then that's a bonus but then in that case i'll learn to handle that vehicle setup uh but i i was never really a fan only because i didn't think it was necessary but okay. hey th this is where we're uh agreeing to disagree on this one Absolutely, but I'm right. Oh, God. Um, but Mario Kart 7, again, uh, online play. Uh -huh. uh, they even had like a like a first-person mode, which was kind of um, odd, but eh, whatever. Gyro control. Moving quite along, Mario Kart Arcade GP DX came out in 2013. Just another souped-up version of the arcade game. Um, this one actually has something called fusion carts, if I remember correctly, um, where two racers can kind of form this weird like tank cart. Jesus. And yeah, so it's like, there's a little bit of double dash love in it, but it's not the same. Um, actually, mm -hmm. speaking for all the Mario Kart arcade games, I'm super surprised they didn't just drop them on Wii U or something, especially when the yeah. system was kind of dead. Um, I guess probably because they're just like, it, it, the system's dead, there's no reason to. But like, I'm surprised they never reutilized um the arcade games sure so it would have been great to see like in the arcade if they had like a double dash where it was like you can have a buddy like on the back and like you know they can hit buttons to shoot the weapons that would be pretty cool yeah i would like that but those were usually in like dave and buster and like player one places where there's alcohol and do like introduced and people would just be falling and yeah, being that's, that, that's a bad time that's good that, that, that's a bad connection don't drink and drive nation you can drink and play mario kart yeah which is what i i normally do same um going from one system that desperately needed a mario kart game to another system that ne desperately needed a mario kart game uh mario kart 8 uh came out for the wii u may 30th 2014 um, introduces the world to um, anti-gravity um, mm -hmm. because fuck F-Zero. Uh, eventually introduces the world to 200 CC because really fuck F-Zero. Jesus, yeah. And introduces everybody to uh, the concept of DLC. This is the first uh, Mario Kart game to feature any yeah. sort of internet uh, or I'm sorry, like online uh, DLC components. Uh, right. Mario Kart 7 did receive a couple patches here and there because people were exploding the fuck out of these games. Right, right. And actually, Mario Kart 7 also introduced us to point-to-point -point races, which I don't think uh, get enough love. Right, right. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of those. Mario Kart 8 had them as well. Um, I know, like, Mount Wario is, like, one big point-to-point. -point. Uh, Mario Kart 64, their retro uh, Rainbow Road was a point-to-point. Okay. Uh, and obviously what I'm saying by point to point nation is it's not a lap. It is one big track that you yeah. go, you hit certain points in the track. I feel like you were more explaining that to me than the nation. Oh, no, I, I, I don't, I don't mean, I'm, I'm probably talking about it out of my ass. I think it's called a circuit instead of a point to point or something like that. I don't know the racing lingo, but yeah, Tom doesn't look impressed. Um, but Mario Kart 8, again, like I said, it's, it was on a system as the Wii U. 
Okay. Um, its sales numbers uh, respect uh, reflect that as well. Eight point four million. Uh, so quite the drop off from the uh, the double digit millions that right. the, that the series was doing. Uh, it is it is still the first the the the, the best selling Wii U game out there. Okay. Um, so yeah, there you go with that. Uh, and like I said, Mario Kart 8 introduced us to DLC. Also uh, brought in non-Mario characters again. Um, like we said, Arcade had its Namco characters. Even Mario Kart DS gave us Rob the Robot, because sure. Um, that, that famous oh, Mario yeah. character, you know? I definitely didn't play Mario Kart DS then. Oh, okay, <laughs> there you go. He was an unlockable, I, I think. Right. Uh, you know, hot off the heels of uh, Super Smash yeah. Brothers Brawl, yeah. he shows up in Mario Kart DS. Uh, yeah, uh, that that might have came out before. I don't, I don't really recall. But anyway, um, uh, but yeah, non Mario characters. Uh, you've got Link. You've got Villager, Isabel. Um, uh, but Mario Kart Eight on the Wii U. Um, I mean, I don't want to say save the system because the system was beyond saving. Um, right, right, right. It, just, we, you know, it, it, it was on it was a it was a great attempt man the wii u definitely doesn't get a lot of love um it did not get a lot of love in uh when it was out but you know it has a great uh, great selection of games uh and mario kart mm-hmm. 8 is uh is proof positive that that game was uh great also what's proof positive that mario kart 8 was great because when it was released in uh april tw- uh, 28th 2017 for the Nintendo Switch mm-hmm. under the guise of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it sold 29 million copies and is the best selling Switch game as of now. Wow. Um, so it, that to me, it's, it's almost like a, a great, like, come from behind victory um, to use a Mario Kart uh, fucking pun. Right. Um, yeah, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, I think what we first want to talk about is that it doesn't. It, it, we've just been so spoiled with how much content the game had. It has a proper battle mode this time. Uh, mm-hmm. It did introduce a couple new characters, like in the form of the Inklings and like Bowser Jr. is now here. Yeah. Um, Actually, all the Bowser kids. All the Bowser kids, yeah. They they were, they came they came in on Mario Kart Eight, which I thought was was fucking cool. I'm a huge fan of the Koopalings. Um, but Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, like we said, sold that much. Best-selling Switch game. We played it online, actually, uh, the past couple of days with, um, you know, my fiance, yourself, myself, our buddy Andrew, his wife Kim, and it was a fucking blast, man. Played uh, played perfectly. Yeah, it was um, a good time. To be fifth wheel. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good time to have with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, I think though um, they should have kept supporting this game in the same sense as like Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is concerned. Um, there definitely could have been more tracks, more uh, characters, uh, more carts, stuff like that. Um, oh my God! Can you imagine if they can you imagine if they put Cloud in with his motorcycle? See, I, I think I, we're gonna definitely talk about what we want out of Mario Kart games. Um, I don't like like people want to talk about making like a Super Smash Kart sort of thing because like again you have you know, Isabel, Villager, Inkling, uh, Link in these games now. Um, I just like to see that kind of like as a bonus and not necessarily as the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mario Kart has great recognition, obviously because of all the the sales numbers we went through and and the longevity of this entire series. But um, I I think it really should remain mostly Mario Kart. Uh, if they want to make like a Nintendo cart or a Smash cart or something like that, you'd have to brand it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't get I, me wrong, like, you know, I, I would like to see, I, I'm surprised we haven't seen characters like Captain Olimar or Pikmin in Mario Kart, especially considering how closely knit that franchise is to the same people developing the Mario games. What about um, Captain Falcon? Captain, same thing, Captain Falcon. Yeah, I mean, he he does have Blue Falcon is in the game. Um, the F Zero courses are there. You have a Captain Falcon amiibo costume, which uh, is a thing. Um, but yeah, like ha- having Captain Falcon in it, I think having characters like Kirby or Samus or something might be a little too Smash oh, Brothers. Brand. It's a little too Smash Brothers, exactly. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't be like, you know, I'm not going to poo poo it. I'm just saying like, you know, like eh, it should remain Mario Kart. Mario Kart still has a ton of characters that they can always go with. 
um, which we'll talk about actually in a little bit. Uh, real quick though, uh, Mario Kart Arcade GP VR, which I really don't know anything about, came out in 2019. Uh, or 2017, I can't really read my handwriting. Uh, a couple years ago. Okay. Another arcade game uh, has VR, the end. Um, Mario Kart Tour, the oh. much maligned iOS mobile version of Mario Kart. So came out September 25th, 2019. Has made, uh, as of right now, $86 million. Uh, and... I would say rightfully so because this game is just filled with microtransactions and mm -hmm. currencies and shit like that. I re-downloaded the game. Um, I am playing it completely casually. I just want to see the courses. I just want to see the characters. Um, and obviously all that stuff is locked behind, you know, gold coins, green coins, rubies, tickets, this one, that one. It, it, yeah. It's so, it, it's predatory. Um, sure, yeah. But whatever it's it's mario kart on the phone and i'm treating it exactly like that and where do you play it i'm playing it on uh on my phone it's a good toilet game oh a toilet game yes i'm saying that that's what we're getting at yes um i can't i can't play games on the toilet my feet fall asleep my legs fall asleep eh, you gotta know you, you gotta know your limits and know your right. time how long you're there for <laughs> I'll um you. So Mario Kart Tour, yeah, still going on strong. See, the support Mario Kart Tour gets with its different courses, um, mission modes, characters. you got Donkey Kong Jr. in this game back again. Uh, Funky Kong, Dixie Kong, the Hammer Brothers for the first time. Um, I, I, I think, uh, like, the treatment that game gets out of its characters really should be brought into a Mario Kart game proper on the consoles. Luigi was not a launch character, which is BS. Luigi was not a launch character. Yes, you're right, Tommy. Uh, but now there's like five different Luigis. You got like Luigi in like leader hosen and stuff like that. Um, you got like Ice Luigi. Uh, yeah. I, I, I penguin that. suit. I dropped that game because he wasn't a launch character. That's understandable. Uh, but I think they brought him in for Luigi's Mansion. I think right, like that. Uh, around that time, I think he should have been there in the first place. I understand completely, but I, the 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 amount of characters though I think is is uh, phenomenal. But, sure. um, and then the last thing uh, that came out that is Mario Kart related, uh, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit came out last year uh, in October sixteenth, twenty twenty, and this is that weird AR Mario Kart mm. RC game. Um, I. <laughs> for this episode, actually, I've been dancing around, putting it in my cart, taking it out of my cart. I didn't commit to it uh, because I don't just don't have any there. place to play it. Yeah, there's no But reason. it looks like a lot of fun, and it is classic Nintendo just being like, Let, let's let's make a fucking uh, RC car with a camera on it. Technically, this wasn't Nintendo. This was, um, uh, I think it was called Velen Studios, which are the, the okay. people who made... Um, oh, my God. What did they do? They, they're old Vicarious Visions people, so they're, you know, kind of you know, a little mad scientist-y. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I think they came to Nintendo with that, which is pretty cool. Uh, but that is that is it at as far as all the released Mario Kart games. Um, there is a Mario Kart ride in Super Nintendo World whenever that opens. And let me rephrase that. It is physically there in the theme park. Uh, yeah. If people are going to be getting their hands on it or whatever, um, you know, we'll see. But um, there was some videos released. It's like an AR sort of thing. Like you can look around and you're basically racing uh, Bowser and his Koopa kids or something like that. Uh, how, about, how about you just, I don't know, make a go-kart track and play Mario Kart on go-kart. I, I feel like that's going to be very uh, hard to do. <laughs> There's a lot less to control when it is a uh, on-track ride and you have an AR goggles and you can look around no, and shoot I'm shit. Not, no, 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 no. I'm not, no, I'm not saying like, you know, no, I'm saying an actual go-kart track with like Mario Kart carts. And you can just drive freely. Yeah. That's dangerous. That's what I'm saying. No, like at a go-kart plate, like on a go-kart track. Still, I don't think there's a lot that could go wrong. Don't get me wrong. No weapons. Well, no, it's just it's a, it's a race. They give you like you know they give you like a Bowser helmet or a Luigi helmet, and okay. that's who you are. I'm not saying like you know you're throwing stuff at people. Sure. 
Wait. I mean, that's the whole fun. Huh. Uh oh. Um, yeah, it's funny. Actually, Tom, it's funny you bring that up because there was that company in Japan that was doing that. They were renting out go karts and Mario related costumes, and they were really? driving around in Tokyo or, or wherever. And um, uh, Nintendo actually sued the shit out of them, and um, they had to shut wow. down. Um, you know, they, they're protecting their brand, rightfully yeah. so. It's a company that wants to make money. So. Sure. They're not your friend as much as they want to be, or you think they are. Yeah. So we talked about Mario Kart as it is a franchise, as we've yeah. played them, as we've seen them, uh, uh-huh. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Tommy, what do you want to see from the future? We kind of touched upon it a little bit here and there when we're talking about modes we want to see back, characters we want to play as. Right. What, what do you want to see in like Mario Kart 9, Mario Kart Ultimate, whatever the next one's going to be? <laughs> sure. Um, I mean, I know I said like I would like to see like Cloud on his like with the motorcycle, like, you know, yeah, uh, that he rides. But uh, what I mean, Final Fantasy, I'm going to stick with my Final Fantasy motif because that's going to be my mode for the year is um thanks for paying attention um I, you want to play as cloud as a, on a motorcycle i got you final fantasy motif i got you there's a uh character in final fantasy 15 named uh they call his name's iggy and he's like the driver of the party okay so i'd like to see that um you know you know play as him it just i, I want to see more like you know Cause like without they they have the Animal Crossing, so like I want to see more stage like character state like like more world stages. Mm, like, okay. Not world. Uh, like okay, if they decide to put Samus in it for whatever reason, give me you know a Metroid stage. Sure, I like that. That would be really fucking cool. Where like you know you have to like dodge Ridley coming out of like the lava or some shit like that. Right, I like um, it. I like it. Oh, that's the guy's name, Ridley. Yes. Okay, cool. You were giving me the face like this is more. I don't know what he's talking about. No, well, I mean, you know, but it, I know what you mean. You were you were saying the right stuff at that time. The right stuff. No oh, god. We got the beats. We got. Um, the beats. I, I like where your head's at though. Um, having like the the more because I mean, y- there was no excite bike representation and no real F zero representation in Mario Kart Eight, but right. they did have co- courses. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like stuff like that. I, I'm definitely uh, I'm I'm into that. Uh, you know, another thing I I I would like to see them go back to like if you pick Luigi, you know, you get the flower a little bit more often than not. Okay. Uh, so like more special items. Exactly. Like I mean, in this in, in Mario Kart, I really enjoy the whole like the random like you get all eight weapons. The fuck right. with people. Minus the blue shell, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, I, I, you know, but like more specialty weapons for like the characters I would like to see. Okay. Um, I like that. What about you? Um, I like, I like having the different worlds in Mario Kart 8. I think that's pretty Uh cool. Um, if I remember correctly, I think, um, uh, the, one of the Sega racing games did that where, um, you were racing in different game slash character specific levels. Okay. Um, and it was cool in that case because I mean, obviously, every Mario Kart game is going to have a Luigi's Circuit Mansion level, a Mario Circuit, uh, you know, a Peach Beach sort of thing. Um, right. But all of those obviously are encompassed in the Mario universe. Sure, um, sure. But having the Animal Crossing level, the uh, F Zero level, the Zelda level, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that's uh, um, I I do like that. Um, people want to always go back to saying games like uh, Diddy Kong Racing with like its hub world and stuff like that. I don't necessarily think Mario Kart needs that. Um, Mario has that in, you know, they have Mario games just for that. I don't sure. necessarily think you need like a open world drive around sort of thing. Um, but like I said, when we're talking about Mario Kart DS, I like the mission idea. Uh, it definitely gives a little bit of legs to a game that like if you're only playing it by yourself you know you can hop in and do something with um because i mean there's only so much content one person can get out of that game not playing multiplayer not playing online you know they can just do the do the cups do the races get the trophies and that's it that's what i'm doing right now i'm trying to complete 100 cc but whatever stage i'm on i just i keep getting hit by like the world (laughs) sure yeah um, so it'd be good, nice change of pace to be like, you know what, maybe I'm going to do this mission mode for a little bit just to kind of get my head around it. Yeah. Um, 
in that same sense though i think like unlocking characters um i remember back in may uh, super smash Bros. melee um you had to do specific things to unlock specific characters versus how uh you unlock characters nowadays is just like play 10 matches 20 matches 30 matches 40 matches like it's just a matter of like keep playing and you'll do it i feel I like, like well, no, I like it too, but I, I, I would like a little more like differentiation, like, hey, to play as Rosalina, you have to get first on the Cosmic Observatory or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, what was that? With like Peach. Yeah, something like that. Like, I, I think that would be cool to kind of like, you know, break you out of your shell, reward you for doing something that you wouldn't normally do. Yeah. Um. And I would also like what I was saying with like the different, it doesn't need to be all encompassing Nintendo characters. Like those Nintendo characters are good as a bonus. Okay. Um, but other Mario characters, uh, we just got, there's just too many damn babies. But if you want to give me more babies, get, get, where's baby Wario and baby Waluigi, you know? Like, fuck it, let's go ham on this shit. Mario Kart Tour, I think that's where they're doing it right. Like they're just pumping different characters in and out. Okay. And hey, here's the thing. The, there's a Mario Kart game that has these characters in it. So let's just transfer them over. You know, you, know, you got Bowser, Dry Bowser, Gold Dry Bowser, all these Shy sure. all these Yoshis, all these Birdos. Like, why not? You know? Give me a Bowser Fury stage. Shit. There you go. You might get that. You might get like God Slayer Bowser in one of these uh, right. games. Um,. But all in all, man, I think Mario Kart 8 uh, Deluxe specifically is my favorite Mario Kart game. Obviously, the most modern one. Um, my top Mine's three would Dash. probably be Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Double Dash, and 64. Yeah, I can agree. I can I can agree to that. Yeah, I think that's a safe oh. bet, especially because we're both oh, like I... the same age sort of thing. So. Yeah. What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're, um, you're, you're just gonna keep eating popcorn in the movie studio, huh? Yeah, I'm eating uh, lifesavers gummy, so uh, suck my dick. Yeah. Oh, just real quick, fuck any Rainbow Road. Stop. So, all right, you know what? Rainbow Road. I mean, that that's a that's a that that is the Mario Kart track. Like that is the motif. That's the thing. That's like the final <laughs> boss. If racing games had a final boss, it's Rainbow Road. Yeah. Agreed. Um, we reached out to the nation actually, uh, and, and we got a, a couple things back. Um, our boy Will, one of the uh, OG listeners of the Rude Boys Power Hour, uh, Rude Boys Gamecast, etc., etc., etc. Will's thoughts: uh, Double Dash and Eight are the best entries. Props to you, Will. Uh, mm -hmm. he always plays a peach uh, the most often, to the confusion of his friends. Uh, and he says Mario Kart 9 needs the tracks, drivers, and weapons exclusive to MK Tour, which is exactly what I agree with. And Tommy, I know you were talking about having special uh, weapons and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Mario Kart Tour has that. So. Okay. Still doesn't make me want to re-download. All right. Hey, that's fine. I'm playing it. We could play it together. That's cool. It won't get my coin. It won't, I, 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 it's just that, like, okay, I do play mobile games. That one I feel is so pay to win type of shit. It's it's ridiculous. You can't advance unless you drop money in it. No, I, I agree because um, in addition, yeah. uh, the point system is so weird with it. Like you have to have the best cart parts and characters in order to get all the points, to get all the stars, to unlock all the characters. It doesn't matter if you get first, you have to get all the stars. It's so, I hate it. It scares me off of mobile gaming in particular. However, I'm playing it in like the basest sense possible. Sure. So, you know, like right now I, I I did all the cups and shit and I'm like, oh, I could go get more stars. I'm like, nah, fuck you. I'll come back when there's more, you know? Yeah, like, you know, I mean, I, you know, I play mobile games a lot, um, yes. specifically Contest of Champions. I've maybe dropped $25 into that game in the sure. years that I've been playing. Well, I mean, that, that, that's fair because that is also rewarding the developers. Like, they did a good job. They played a, well, they made a game that you are dedicated to, and you'll throw them some bones, sure. Yeah. All right. But you, but you can get, you know, you can get stuff just, you know, not, not dropping money. Yeah, exactly. And I, I'm, I'm fine with it, you know? Yeah. Fucking around. That's yeah. it. Yep, exactly. Uh, any, any more Mario Kart memories that we could talk about? Yeah. That's it. I think we're all Mario Karted out. 
Uh, no, not, not, I mean, maybe we'll play some tonight. Oh yeah, no, we'll, we'll keep playing it, man. It's a, I mean, I, I have all the fucking, I mean, we're not a visual medium, but like, there you go. I'm just holding them right here in my hand. Double Dash, 8 Deluxe, 7, oh. DS, Super, 64, Super Circuit, Wii. Yeah. I, I want what you just held up. I want you to have your fiance take a picture of you looking all crazily holding those games up for this Instagram post for this episode. Okay, that's fine. I, that'll be that'll go in line with like the Zelda episode where all my Zelda games are out, all the Pokemon games. Right, but so. I want you looking like all like crazy like. Okay, can Sorry. happen. And on that <laughs> note, Nation, <laughs> we went. <laughs> <laughs> we went all three, eight laps, however many laps it, it, it was, but we're back. We got the gold. Uh, your boys are standing shoulder to shoulder. Um, that big old fish is spitting out the trophy, and uh, we're going to get drunk on champagne. That's a Super Mario Kart reference to those who didn't know. Um, but yes, go play those Mario Kart games. They're amazing. Speaking of games, Tommy, next episode uh, is also going to be a video game heavy episode, but something now... Wow. Y- you could be uh, a, a little more uh, active in, not saying you weren't active in this episode. I'm just saying, you know, you you have research on this too. Wrestling games. Yes. We're going to be talking about some professional wrestling games. Yes. Um, in, of WrestleMania coming in, out. Exactly. Yeah. Coming out later uh, this month, technically, because it's coming out in February. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about wrestling games uh, from pro wrestling to uh, no mercy uh, to the WWE games, to the WWE garbage games. Um, yeah, uh, if you got any wrestling game memories, Nation, we'll he- we'll reach you on the social media. But get started, man. Let us know what you think about your wrestling games, your favorite ones, what kind of games you're into. If you're the more arcade style, the simulation style, whatever. Make some creative wrestlers. You create your friends, and then you beat them up and off of the hell in the cell, brother. You know. Oh my God! Oh, the stories we have. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, and we'll we're gonna be talking about that next episode. Oh, the uh, so stories. get ready for that. Can't we're wait. Gonna, we're gonna tell you all about that on our social media channels. And speaking of our social media channels, we're available uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. You just search for Rude Boys Four Six Nine on those social media platforms. Give us a like, a follow, a whatever the hell else. Uh, we have a YouTube page. We have a YouTube? Yeah, Tommy. Uh, that is uh, bit.ly forward slash Rude Boys Rude Tube. That's all lowercase. Um, we have Rude Boys Reacts going out for WandaVision. Uh, we have uh, we got a new episode coming out or probably already out uh, for episodes three and four of WandaVision. So check that out, please, please, please. Four, four and three. three. Yeah, four and three. Yep, that's what Tom says. Um, our podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, and also the Podbean Network. Uh, You can find that at rudeboys.podbean.com. Drive that bean. (laughs) If you want to hit me up on social media, I'm at Tez Sharms, T-E-H underscore S-H-E-R-M-S. You want to get me on social media? You can get me at Tommy underscore Cash, and that's Cash with a K. Yeah, uh, Cash eighty. Very good. That off. You spun out. You spun out right at the finish line. The banana yeah, typical. peel. Typical. Exactly. Trust me. Um. Yeah. So that's it, Nation. Thank you so much for joining us. Episode ninety is in the books. Episode ninety-one, all about wrestling video games, wrestling videos, and um, we'll see you there. And uh, go play some Mario Kart. Go play some Mario Kart. This has been a presentation of the Rude Boys Podcast Network. Um, oops.